All right, welcome everybody. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use ICE device administration to create user accounts so that they have access to your network devices and also how to limit certain commands uh, to your users, okay? So I'm using ICE 2.1 and let's log in. And this is what ICE looks like. Um, this is my home environment, my home lab, so um, I'm practicing with ICE and I'm trying to get to know ICE a little better. So for device administration, you're, we're going to go to work centers and then go to device administration. First go to overview and this is what it looks like. Uh, the first thing you need to do is an enable TACAX on ICE and the way that you do that is you can click the development page or you can click this link right here, but you can go here and uh, tell that ICE whatever device is going to be your policy node, um, which one to use. But if we go back here, let's go to this development page. Oh, I think it's all, this is also because it's enabled. Um, so what we need to do is we actually need to go to administration and then go to deployment and then look at your ICE deployment. And at the very bottom, you'll say enabled device admin service. So this is kind of like enabling TACACs. So now let's go to work centers, um, overview, and then let's start creating some user accounts. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to identities, all right? Here you can go ahead and create all of your users that need access to your network. And we'll just click the add button here. And then this is where you give it a name. So we'll say test user admin, and then give it a and let's give this user a password of uh, password one two three all lowercase password one two three and then you could give them an enable password as well so we'll do the same thing password one two three password one two three okay uh, you could give them you know fill in their information first name last name and then also put them in a group um, if you just hit submit it'll put them in some default group uh, nope, we got to do a capital P for the password because there are some password complexity requirements. And then that should be good. So once I created it, it didn't put it in a user identity group. Um, this is where we're going to create um, user groups so we can just put all of our uh, users into these identity groups. So let me do another one for test user and I'll say help desk. Test user HD for help desk and give it a password. Still using password one, two, three. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead and create some user groups so we could put them in. So you go to user identity groups, make sure you are here, not endpoint identity groups. We'll create one and we'll say test admin and then create another one, test help desk. Hit submit and then we can put um, users in them. So we'll just go here and then click uh, which one I'm, I'm in help desk so test user help desk and then for test admin let's add a user for test user admin and if we click on it we should see what users added to what group all right so that's step one and two done now what we need to do is we need to start creating our policies so let's go to policy elements and let's go to results and let's create some profiles here okay so we'll click add and then give it a profile name so we'll say uh, test user admin underscore profile and then what privilege level is it going to have by default and what is the maximum privilege level that it's going to have so 
it'll be we'll say 15 because this is going to be our admin account and same thing with maximum privilege level and then hit submit so now we have test user admin profile and let's make another one for test user help desk test user help desk this is going to have a, a privilege level of a default of one and then he will have a maximum privilege level of let's say seven okay and then we just hit submit so now we created a TACAX profile which gives them their privilege levels but now let's go into the command sets so we'll do add and we will say test user admin underscore command and then for admin we want to give them all access so we will click this button here that says permit any command that is not listed below so here I don't have any specific one so this is they're gonna have full access hit submit and let's create another profile or another command set for help desk users. So here, test user help desk underscore, underscore command. And this is where we're gonna be very specific on what our um, help desk users can, uh, what commands they can issue. So what we'll do is we'll hit add and we will say permit and then let's say enable. You can give specific arguments like enable seven, so privilege level seven, hit the checkbox, and then just start adding commands. So whatever we want our help desk users to have, this is what we are going to do. So we can do a show running dash config. That'll be one. Let's add another one. Permit show IP. IP interface brief. Add and let's do a show interfaces status. That'll be okay. Yep, that'll be good. Then click submit. All right, so now I have those command sets set. I have our profiles. Now this is where the meat of what's going on. Uh, where all of this is going to be put together and this is under device admin policy sets okay so you have to create a policy set and put them all together so what I could do here is I will create a new policy set and you could name it whatever you want double click there and just say um, test underscore command policy and then here for conditions we actually need to create an attribute here add an attribute choose device type okay device type and then it equals all device types so if this is going to be like a Cisco switch or a, um, a Juniper switch or whatever that's trying to contact uh, ice then that's what is going to be used so they go ahead and click done. So let me go over that again. We're going to choose device, device type equals all device types. Click done. Uh, we could probably get rid of this first section here. Delete that. So we only have that attribute. I thought I can get rid of it. No, oh, there you go. It's gone. Okay, cool. Now we need to go under authorization policy. So we got to go here and insert new rule and then call it uh, test command uh, TACAX policy. TACAX policy. And then we will say choose our user identity groups and it says if someone who is part of the test admin group then have them use the command set of test user admin command and then choose the shell profile 
which is the test user admin profile. And click done and then we got to add another one for the help desk. So new rule test command underscore tack axe policy I'll say HD. If anyone logs in that is part of the help desk then give them their command set and then give them their profile click done scroll all the way down click submit and then now we should be logging into our switch and uh, use these users and let's see what kind of commands uh, they are allowed okay this is assuming that your switch is already set up for TACAX, but if you don't have that, here are the commands that I have set on my switch at home. Um, and uh, make sure that these are all applied. One thing that I want to point out is I named my TACAX server ICE, so I ISE. So whenever you see ISE in here, it's talking about looking at that server. Then under the line VTYs, I created a group called ICE group, which is created right there okay so follow along um, with these commands and then apply that to your switch okay I already did that so now let's go and test it on uh, our, my device all right so we said test admin and his password was capital P one two three Authentication failed. What was the, yeah, test admin. Let's try this again, test admin. P A S S. If this doesn't work, let's try test HD. Test HD. Authentication failed. Oh, I failed. Let me figure out why. All right. I think the reason why we were getting that authentication failure was because for the authentication policy, it's trying to look at the all users store. So that was, it was there by default. I didn't change it. I wanted to use the internal users because that's where all the users are held. Click done and let's try this again. That's where all the so the reason why I wasn't authenticating was because I was using the wrong username. Why didn't you guys tell me I was using the wrong username? So let's log in using the correct username, test user admin, and let's do a password one, two, three, enable password, and we're in. We can go into config T, we can go into interface, the interface, one zero one, and we can do whatever we need to. That's good. We should have full access. Now, if I exit out and try to log back in with the help desk user, let's see what privileges we have here. Test user HD password one two three enable. So it says command authorization failed. I just tried to do enable, but what happens if I do enable seven? That command allowed. It's because my default level that I set on this user was default privilege level of one. So if I say enable seven, then it allows that command. Uh, what else did I allow it to do? If I hit question mark, don't have a lot of commands here. I don't even have the config command so I can't go into config T doesn't allow it but what I did have was show IP interface brief I believe so I have that command I have show interfaces status that's working if I do a show run doesn't allow it so here you get to see um, those w commands that you applied on the user uh, or actually for the uh, policy set uh, the TACAX command set 
whatever you put here, then uh, that user is going to have. So I just demonstrated that. So, um, so that's how you set up um, users and give them specific commands to use. Um, so I hope this was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.